Hello and welcome to Match Fishing TV. In this week's show we'll be looking at the result from the Veterans World Championships. There's also the Disabled World Championships, the Ladies National, uh, Feeder Masters Rounds at Hallcroft and Boddington, two Fishermania qualifiers and the Kennet and Avon Canal League sponsored by Census. I'm joined in the studio by Tom Scully. Hello. And Matt Godfrey. Good evening. So let's get straight into it Tom. Wrinkley's World Championship. An absolutely emphatic victory for Team England, I'm pleased to say. Um, they finished 17 points clear of second place. Team England had 12 points. France were actually second with 29 points. And Hungary third <laughs> with 30 points. And even better still, individually, Harry Billing was crowned world champion on his debut world championship performance. Um, second was a guy called Gabar Timar with two points as well. He had a weight slightly less than Harry's. And third was actually the um, Falls Dreading Team England manager, Mark Downs, he had two points and a weight of 46 kilos. So. Uh, Mark would have been defending his title, wouldn't he? He would, So yeah. Mark was, was Veterans, World Championship, uh, Veterans World Champion last year. He's come in and won his section again twice and he's still not been enough to, to retain his crown. I know, I know. He's got two medals in two years from him though, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. Matt, that venue, I think of the River Larm in the Czech Republic, you actually fished a world champs there, didn't you? I did, and looking at them results and weights, it's been similar to when I went, it was just a lively fish, um, they were bleak from bank to bank, underneath them there were roach and skimmers, some hybrids and then some big bream as well and I saw Mark Downs net a fish and it looked like something from an Irish festival, loads of big fish bream, soup. hybrids, yeah, it looked an awesome venue. Incredible. Definitely, I mean I was talking to Harry this morning and um, he mentioned the key from their point of view was first of all the ground bait that they fed, it had to be really really sticky, carry a lot of feed and go straight down to the bottom. And secondly, the rigs they used to present over it. And apparently it was all about varying things. They caught some fish on a flat float, they caught on light running rigs, but also they caught on inching rigs. And they had to keep just swapping and changing things just, just to keep producing little runs of fish. But I mean, looking at the way, it's incredible fishing. Yeah, no, that, that is staggering. I mean, I think a lot of people overlook just how much of an influence in terms of feed Mark Downs has had on our international teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's very easy. To, to see the two marks as you know a, um, a pair that have really taken England performances, well, they've maintained England's performances, and in some areas they've taken them to a new level. But I think his partnership with Census mm. has really borne fruit over the years. You know, Mark certainly was always, even as a youngster, Mark was interested in ground bait and feeding. But I think what he's done now. It's just, it's different gravy. I mean, if, if you need a specialist feed, um, the first person I would certainly ask is, is Mark Downs. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting you should say that as well, because another thing Harry actually said when I was on the phone to him, um, it was very, very quick to praise uh, Mark Downs and Steve Sanders and Danny Sixsmith. He sort of said that, you know, they sorted the method out, they sorted the feeding out, and Harry practised, um, you know, a lot of what they said. Obviously, he had input as well. Um, but it, it was quick to praise them, you know, he said they sorted it, really. Awesome performance by all of them, really. It was, no, um, no in, in, incredible. I mean, th that is a staggering winning mm -hmm. margin in any event. And in the World Championships, it's, it's like the French and the Hungarians and these snookers. Definitely. I mean, individually as well, the other two anglers who fished with, um, with Mark and um, Harry were Danny Sixsmith and Steve Sanders. I think they were fourth and fifth. Yeah. So, <laughs> so four, four Englishmen in the top five. Yes. That is, that is staggering. Awesome result. And of course, proper veterans, because they had to be over 60. Well, apparently, there's rumour has it, they're on about changing it next year and bringing it down to 55. So that'll be, that, for a lot that'll be the French pushing yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, brilliant performance. Well done, Harry. Well done, England. Um, great start to the weekend. Um, and the Disabled World Championships fished uh, at the same time. Yeah, that were on the same venue, Rod, on a stretch. I think it's downstream of where um, the vets fished. And that was won by Croatia with 19 points. Um, behind them on 27 points, quite a big gap behind them, Czech Republic, and our team, the English, had 32 points, which put them in third place, so another medal for England, Yeah. Um, the same venue, but I was looking at the individual points on both the world champs, and this is interesting, um, P. Dominique won the uh, disabled ones with two points. I'm going to go for that, I'm going to go Pierre Gentili. 
Piergentilly. Piergentilly Dominique. Right, well right. done. That, 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 well that done. started that's probably completely wrong, but he might not see it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Kaliak Zelko. No, I'll leave you to that one. Kaliak Zelko <laughs> was second, again with two points though, and then England's Roy Wells third. Oh, you should have let Tom have a good pronouncing Roy Wells. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I could nail that one. <laughs> but if you look at that, the top three in both the disabled yeah. and the um, vets have all got two points, which tells two you that there's wins. definitely methods to be sorted yeah. out. Them lads so. have obviously twigged <laughs> onto it. And I meant to um, mention it a minute ago. I'll tell you what we're interested about that place, and it still looks similar on the pictures. The water's always a bit murky and coloured, and I remember seeing they were like sewers literally pumping in. Yeah. And we always talk about our rivers being too clear in yeah. England, and over there they were literally straight from the street, sewers pumping into the river, fish everywhere. It's obviously a big healthy system, fish love it. And it's been happening for years. Yeah, uh, yeah. When, when in the EU bring in water directives <coughs> and everybody has to clean up their act. It always seemed to me from the early days of being in the EU that Great Britain, United Kingdom has gone, yeah, yeah, we'll do that. And, and so, you know, the, all, all the outlets are monitored. Yeah. They're all, we, we definitely cleaned up our act. And I mean, I look at the rivers that I used to fish regularly and they're, they're like tap water now. Mm. You know, now, whilst that is great, I can't help feeling that it doesn't do a great deal for... Um, the food chain in terms of lots and lots of bloodworm larvae yeah, and, definitely. and yeah, organic ma- matter organic in matter in the river um, and I think you know those countries who've been a little bit more lax shall we say in yeah. cleaning up their act the anglers have definitely benefited from it they might all go on with diseases but the catch are loads <laughs> so are we saying as well if we vote out to this Brexit thing we could Fishing be catching fish like that on the trend yeah. trend man yeah, it's going to happen it's going to happen no it's uh, <laughs> No, brilliant. Well done, England, um, on, on both performances. Um, well done, guys. Well done, Roy, to his, to his bronze medal in the uh, Disabled World Champs. Um, ladies' National Championship, Tom? Yeah, this was at Woodland View on, uh, on Saturday, and I was absolutely made up when I heard it. Um, Kayla Smith's a very good friend of mine. Um, but actually, on the same match last year, um, she suffered a little bit of a, a tragedy. Well, a big tragedy. Um, and Mum comes to watch on that match every year. And um, she was sat behind her on the match last year, and unfortunately, she suffered a, a brain hemorrhage, and she later died. I remember discussing this at the time. Yeah. Um, so everybody who was there was really shook up by it. It was really, really sad. Um, but a year on, um, obviously, Kayla's gone back. It's the same match this year at Woodland View, and she's gone and won it. Um, so I was absolutely made up. Yeah, well done, Kayla. Well couldn't happen to a nicer girl. It she's couldn't. It couldn't. Cracking angler. Oh, she's brilliant. I mean, she made a debut in the full England ladies team last year as well, so she's definitely on the up. Yeah, she's um, been picked again this year as well. Yeah, she's, she's doing ever so well. But she won the match with 36 kilos, I believe. She caught on pellets, fishing shore and pinging along the bank. Really nice net of carp. Um, so, yeah, brilliant performance. Yeah, she, she's... Um, I can say no higher praise, and it's completely politically incorrect, but she fishes like a bloke. She's ever so good. <laughs> Scary. But the, the ladies world, uh, the, sorry, the ladies national now. How many are fishing it? I think we're not talking about the big fields of yesteryear, are we? No, no. fifty, I think there was. Yeah. Between, because she was saying they were hoping for sixty odd. There was been sixty odd the year before, I think. But yeah. this, I know the match was on front beans and back beans, so there can't really have been any more than about fifty on them two yeah. legs. So. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a shame because it's a great event, well worth winning, um, and there are a lot of good lady anglers in in, in the United Kingdom. Yeah, so. Yeah. No, well done, uh, well done, Kayla. Um, brilliant performance, and um, so that's two in three years. Um, some going definitely, it's awesome. Uh, feeder Masters qualifier, Boddington Reservoir, Matt. What do you know about? Yeah, there were a couple of Feeder Masters this week. Um, Boddington's was an interesting match. It didn't fish as well as I expected it to. All this hot weather, and they used to they were catching a hundred pound weights over Christmas when it was freezing cold. So I thought, all this hot weather, it was freezing last week. <laughs> But I thought, get ready, this will be a massive weight. And it wasn't. Um, it was won by Rob Wharton with £88. Typical Boddington-style fishing, long-range feeder. Um, I think he fished a large um, Guru hybrid feeder with pellets on the feeder. But interestingly, he fished with bread on the hook. Something okay. that I've never done. Fished a method feeder, but with three discs of bread on the hook. He had £88. Um, well, it's going to give you a bit of a pop-up bait. It's yeah. going to waft around really nicely, isn't it? It's going to be very visible. That's the yeah. thing. At Boddington's, they're all big fish, almost like specimen fish, and I think a lot of the match anglers who do well there, Steve Ringer, Phil, Rob, they actually take a bit of a specimen boy's approach, like yeah. they're happy to sit there for an hour and not move and leave the rod in and then get one. Yeah. And like this bread on the hook's obviously a wafting bait and then big wise fish come in, 
suck it in dead easy. Um, but on the qualifiers front, Rob qualified, um, Adam Rooney, second best looking man in England, isn't he? I would say so, close between him and Alex Bones, isn't Yeah, it? definitely. Um, <laughs> Adam Rooney qualified as well. Um, and Kerry McMahon. Kerry McMahon? M- McMahon. Kerry McMahon. We're going for McMahon. We're debating with Kerry, I think, yeah. pronunciation with that one. Um, but they're the three qualifiers. Um, but didn't fish as well as we expected it to. £88 won. Well done to Rob. Yeah. Well done. So, um, and we've got another Feeder Masters qualifier. We have. And you spoke earlier about some of the excellent lady anglers we've seen <laughs> coming through. And I've got to tell you, I had first-hand experience of one of these lady anglers on, on Saturday's qualifier. I actually went on the Feeder Masters. Quickly level. clarify what you mean by, first, by first-hand experience. <laughs> I will in a moment. <laughs> I went to the, on the Feeder Masters at, um, at, Hall, at Hallcroft Fishery. And I actually do next to a lady called Tracy Holland. Mm. And I thought I'd seen her somewhere before. And it turns out I'd seen her at Docklow. Um, when we were up there doing some, some features. Um, but anyway, we started fishing, and I, I really attacked it. I chucked some big feeder fools in two different lines. And, uh, and, and she just basically, while I'm chucking still, she's got one, and she's got another one, and I just couldn't catch it. And you're still fishing, you're still filling yeah. it in. <laughs> I, had, I had seven pound on my, on my net total. And, um, Was that tr- mostly small fish or a, a, a <laughs> Unfortunately fish? not. I'd have had a bit more of an exciting day for mostly small fish. <laughs> And uh, Tracy's had 70, 71 pounds. She's actually qualified from our section. She did ever so well. Brilliant. Um, well done, Tracy. She did. She did brilliant. Um, ben Holmes won the match at Allcraft. And interestingly, he caught on the same method. Just a little pellet feeder, a little white, um, boil on the or or um, pellet on the hook. Um, and not feeding a lot, just chucking out and waiting, really, you know. Um, but Allcraft actually brought in some special rules for this match, which was good to see. Because mm-hmm. normally, uh, four-inch hook lengths aren't allowed, and, and pellet and method feeders aren't allowed there. Um, but to accommodate feeder masters, they've brought in special rules, meaning you can fish pellet feeders, you can fish method But only in the feeder masters. But only in that match, yeah. Um, and it were, it were interesting from that reading, because nobody really knew how it was going to go. Um, and it obviously went well, because it worked. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, three qualifiers were Ben Holmes, uh, Tracy Holland, and Andy Fuller, who were all through to the final, so really good. So, and uh, Tom got a real battering, but he was uh, still able to produce a, uh, a nice video interview with the winner and with Mick Lyles, Tom. Yeah. Well, I'm here today with the Feeder Masters Paul Croft Round Champion, Ben Ohm. You've got a fantastic match, haven't you, mate? Yeah, loved it, yeah. Good match. Feel oh, good, Meg. Have you caught them? No, uh, I've caught a pellet feeder, a uh, double corn to start with, and then a white pop up. Have you had some big fish on that big carp? Or? Uh, to start with, I've had three for 25 on the double corn, and then I've caught stocky through the match. Awesome. Did you know you were in front, or did you think it was a close battle? Well, I've gone 3-1 down to a guy at my right, so I need to pull my finger out. What's he ended up with? He ended up with 46, I think. So you've got to come back well later on? Yeah. Well, brilliant. Looking forward to the final? Yeah, be good. Yeah, interested. Excellent. Something different? Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. all good. And also, I'm joined by event organiser Mick Miles. Mick, you must be delighted to be out of this competition shaping up. Well, this is the uh, sixth round, and um, so far, so good. Obviously, when you um, you know when you come up with a concept like this, you, there's always a sentiment down from your mind that people won't accept it. The fact that you know it might have problems, and and because it is a very defined competition, um, you know that that comes with its own set of complications. But I have to say that the competitors have been fantastic. The the um, venue organisers have been absolutely wonderful. You know, all across the day has been great. Um, obviously, Ben just mentioned he's caught in a, a pellet feeder. So today they've actually uh, had a special allowance for us and, and changed the rules and allowed us with method feeders, inline inline feeders, uh, pellet feeders, you can have you know, them, and any any hook bait and a four inch hook length. So it's been a, a real experiment and a, a new thing for all cost and, and a great acceptance for the feeder master. So the, the competition's went really well and the final shaping up to be a great event for people like Ben and Tracy Holland uh, qualified today, which is a fantastic thing. She's good ever so she's been next to me, you know. I right. had to watch well, her, well, I had to watch her all day. <laughs> Smashed up our lady. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. So it's seven pounds worth, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a multiplication somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Now, brilliant event, Mick, yeah. and uh, well done, Ben, on qualifying. Cheers. Well done, Ben. Cheers, boys. Congratulations. See you next time. Cheers.
welcome back. Um, Matt, another Fishermania qualifier. Certainly was. Last at Lakes, um, an interesting one. We had 40 no shows this time. Um, I mentioned it's that. Getting, this is getting ridiculous. Well, it is, but I mentioned that first because it did have a big effect on the result this week. Um, Ian Giddens won the match. Brilliant weight, 166 pound. Um, it was on Match Lake. But fair play to Ian, he put on Facebook, straight races off, all the luck was with me today. Um, he had eight spare pegs to his left, I think it was. So like four, four no-shows no shows, had all yeah. fell into that area. He had eight spare pegs. But interestingly, he started his match off really slowly. He didn't get any bites to start where he said he just caught an odd fish. He's having to draw them from pot. a wide area. There's yeah, fish all over yeah, the lake. Well, where's the food? Backed off up there. Um, but then last... 90 minutes of the match, he's gone down the edge towards this bit of room he's had and caught a carp for £12, feeding ground bait, fishing dead maggots on the up, typical Larford, last hour and a half bagging up, so uh, fishing yeah. and uh, caught these big fish, £166, um, £57 clear a second spot, so massive well done to Ian, he'll be dangerous in the uh, semi-final and final, definitely a brilliant angler. He will, and I do feel really sorry for Ian on this because <clears throat> he has put on Facebook exactly like Matt said. But I want to just say, Ian is probably one of the best anglers at Larford over the last five years yeah. gone on. His results are, are outstanding. And if he had got half a peg anyway, he would have been very Definitely. dangerous. Now, from You've still got to catch him. You have. You've absolutely still got to catch him. They don't jump in the net of their own accord. Definitely. And, and also, from a competitor's point of view, knowing that you're going into that bag with so many empty pegs, yeah, a lot yeah, of people yeah. have been saying, oh, it's no good. I'll tell you what, every fisherman I've ever been on has been dominated by a few tiny little areas. Yeah. Now actually even the final used to be dominated by oh, is. you know, by an area. It, is, it, it used to be predicting who was gonna win it by what you know, what they were gonna draw. So That's right. no, I, I don't think Ian deserves any of the um, any any grief at all. He's done he's done his job. He's caught an awful lot of fish. Um, yeah there is an element of luck in every single match we fish. Definitely a lot. Um, what you know concerns me is how forty people and throw 30 quid in the bin that's, that's you know 1200 quid that nobody's gone and tried to fish for Crazy. you almost earn a lot more than us too that's what i can say yeah <laughs> no it's um uh, is there anything they can do to stop this level of no shows is it because they've changed the format to semi-final i don't because that's not i mean that was announced before these went on sale yeah i don't think it's that at all i don't i don't know what it is a problem that's getting worse and worse i mean we've seen it in some of our matches and events um i'll tell you interesting yeah, but generally you don't you know, if you paid, you generally turn up. Course, it's not like you paid a two pound ticket fee and not turn up. These guys have paid thirty quid. We had two people pay ninety nine quid to go on one of our fishing with the stars days. Ninety nine quid and not turn up. How weird is that? <laughs> Things can happen. Okay, you drive in there, the car breaks down, something happens the night before, cat goes missing, whatever. But for forty people, how many people actually fish that fishing money qualifier? A hundred. Probably 90 odd. 90 it would be, wouldn't it? Okay, so yeah. effectively, you know, a quarter to a third of the field have just stayed home or gone somewhere else. Yeah. I'll tell you something else, Roger, as well. I spoke to James Dent last night on my way back from fishing, yeah. um, and he fished at Larford on Saturday, uh, yesterday. yesterday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he came fourth on the match. Interestingly, we're fourth on both fish shows this weekend. Fourth at Oak Saturday, yeah. and fourth at Larford Sunday. But he said, oh, there were 40 now shows, and he says, he drew like the middle of the top of the lake, like there's a little bank on its own with five or six pegs on it. He says when he got to his peg, every peg was in, started fishing, not caught anything. And about three hours in, he said everyone around him was just packed up and gone out. And then he's caught eight carp in the last people, half of the You're right, Tom. These people have got more money than I've got. Oh, it's, I, I don't, I'll be honest with you. As an angler, personally, and not reflect my sort of professional opinion, I don't like the, the whole ethos behind people who fish it and go home early and don't turn What's it all about? I don't know. Uh, to me, you book on a match, you look forward to a match, you go on a match, you enjoy, enjoy it. it. Whether you catch a load or not, you go for a pint after and you go home. All this packing up early, it's just, I don't know. Packing up early, I don't have that much of an issue with. What I do have a, a, a bit of an issue with is if everybody packs up early when there's very little being caught and they've still got a good chunk of money that they could win. Yeah, exactly. There's sections, there's, yeah. there's ten peg sections, isn't there? You know, it's a, it's a strange one. I don't but the no show, I mean, it's, we'll finish this particular piece on no shows. As far as I'm concerned, it is just rank bad manners. If you're not going to go, let the organiser know. That's if the, one of those people not turning up, there could have been, like the old days, there could have been somebody queuing up wanting to go. Yeah. If they know there's a ticket available. Uh, so, come on, guys, if, you, if you're not going to go to these matches, 
Um, fine, send me the money and then do, then do something else. <laughs> um, can it and over Canal Tom? Yeah, um, another great great match. It was the last match of the series, that was. Uh, Steve Long actually won it, uh, Blackmore Bay Angle. He had £15.13. He caught skimmers on uh, Dead Maggots over Ground Bait. Uh, Rob Jones was second from Frenzy South West. He had £13.14. Again, he caught on Maggots over Ground Bait. And Jason Thomas was third. So it was a good week for Frenzy South West. Um, but interestingly, they say it was the last match in the league. It were Preston Innovation Statues, who, when we've talked about these matches before, they've always been there or there about. Consistency. Yeah. Um, and they've come through and, and won. They finished with 257 points. Home Stores were second with 254 points. And Drennan Borden third with 245. So a good, good solid league, really, it looked to me. Yeah. De- a decent angler won the league individual title, I notice. Yeah, he's not bad, is he? Second best ginger in the country, I've heard. So, <laughs> well done, Simon Windsor. <laughs> Wills War, individual winner of the... Uh, of that league, and uh, Sean Bryan finished second in the individual stakes there. Sean's a great lad, he's a big mate for Richard Chase, you know, real character. <laughs> I can't imagine being a big mate for Richard Chase. Ne- <laughs> You'd never know who he was going to come out with next, would you? <laughs> no, it's uh, <coughs> well done, Simon. Well done, Preston Innovation and Statues. Uh, can't keep a good team down. Um, Oaks for Shuri, for Shimonia, we touched on it earlier. You mentioned um, yeah, yeah. Dente. Um, it was a very good match looking at the results, quite close at the top, but I was really pleased to see this lad qualify. He's one of the keenest anglers I know. He's only 25 or 26 years old, um, fishes all over the country, Craig Goldstraw. I was just a bit 21, so really well done to Craig. He had £132 off Ashpool Peg 1 and caught on maggots down the middle and down the edge as well. Nice, simple match by the sounds of it. Great day's fishing. Um, not too far in front, though. <laughs> I was going to say, that looks a bit <laughs> close to me. Pound and a bit in it. Graham Bodice was second with £131, uh, two ounces. So literally a fish. Yeah, yeah. one fish. Well, one car. Yeah. And it's, and it's changed around. That's, close match. It's, um, no, well done, Greg. Um, you know, if he looks there, he looks there. You know, that one pound can go either way, but thank you very much. So I'll tell you what was interesting as well. Oaks fish with no mention of no shows at the Oaks, so I'm guessing that the Northerners are a bit tighter and make sure they go on the fish for the money. <laughs> they paid the money, they've got some chance. That's it. Absolutely. Um, Dyer Hawcroft Open. Yeah. On, um, the, on the moat. When I was there on the Freedom Masters on Saturday, one thing that were noticeable is there were a lot of carp cruising about up and down the middle, but obviously with being feeder only, you couldn't cast to them. So I wasn't one bit surprised when I saw the result from Sunday and saw that there was a massive result on the pole shallow. And it was actually Paul Mix, Jamie Wilde who, who won the match. He had two hundred and eighty six pounds three. Um, massive weight. But there's some big fish in there, isn't there? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He might have only had twenty five fish for that weight, you know. So, um, massive fish. And he caught just pinging meat shallow. Um, and basically I think he caught a few dobbin as well, just flicking it in front of him. So brilliant, brilliant performance from a brilliant angler. I'm looking forward to Friday, you know, I've got a stopwatch feature planned with Jamie at Allcroft, so hopefully we'll get to see exactly where he does in match machine magazine. And the eight sellers that were setting there, Andy Sellers. That's him. That's yeah. a name from the past. He always, he's been doing well at Allcroft for some time, hasn't he? Yes. There's a few of the sort of old barns that I'd do really well there. Pete Bagshaw does well, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, Steve Clark, ex Trenton skipper, they, they, there's a little group of them all do brilliant at Allcroft. I remember in the old days of Snyder and was Hawley, David Hall. Um, Chris and Andy Sellers, Andy Flyspray, and uh, the, the, well, the, the rumour that David came up with was that Andy needed to carry Flyspray around with him because he yeah, was um, perhaps doing things he shouldn't have been doing and therefore needed sort of disinfecting occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> but there again, David Hall said some horrible things about some people, and Andy Sellers to me was always a perfect gent. Yeah, so well done, Andy Flyspray for second. Um, quite a way behind that. Yeah, long way behind. Yeah. But as I say, all cross fish, the size of them, yeah. one hour, you can catch them this yeah. time. It's strange. No, it's been, it's been another good match. Um, moving away from matches last weekend, looking ahead a little bit, um, Home International is going to be on the River Seven this year. Yeah, a um, bit of a surprise announcement, really. It was actually the Welsh manager who, who told me, who had nothing through from the Anglin Trust about it at all, but it's on the um, a bit called a stretch called the Quarry, which apparently is just outside Shrewsbury. Yeah. I think that could be really, really interesting. Because I know there's a lot of Welsh anglers who do brilliant on the seven. Yeah. Isn't there? Uh, Darren Frost is a good mate of ours, he does ever so well. Ben Roberts does well. Um, I think, you know, it, it's not forced to be. I don't know what the dates are yet. Obviously, it's very early days and we've only sort of heard through the grapevine that it's on there, but that is going to be a real spectacle. Mm. Um, you know, it, we, we know, please God, the weather's okay and it's not in flood. Um, unlikely to be in September. September should be pretty safe. 
it's just certainly a very, very prolific stretch of river. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what sort of international tactics do there. Um, I think that could be a decent sized spectator yeah, yeah. event. Yeah. It's certainly going to be something you're going to go and see. I'll go and watch It'll be it. interesting to see what happens when you put some blood worm into a river that obviously the seven's dominated by bronze maggots and casters, that sort of fishing. So you go and chuck. Well, you, say, you say that, that, but I mean, there's an awful lot of fish caught on the seven now on pellet. Yeah. You know, the, the chub and the barb will really have a go for that. It is going to be a real contrast of styles. Definitely. I know you guys wanted to have a quick chat about who might make the teams, but. I can't see us changing dramatically from our international teams. No. You know, it's, there, are, there are one or two anglers. You, you know, you'd look at that venue and you'd say, uh, Dave Arrell's fished for England before. Dave Arrell's brilliant on there. That's absolutely going to suit him. I don't think we'll be going down that road. I think that we will be treating this as though it was an international in the Czech Republic. I think it's going to be the international style anglers are going to be to the fore. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be a great event. Um, yeah, well done to the Angling Trust for going with that because yeah. it's a great river, um, nice time of year. Yeah, it'll be on my calendar. Definitely, I'm excited about that. One. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now we gave you some grief in the first half of the show, Tom, um, about your performance in, in the Feeder Masters. I deserved it, though, to be fair. You, well, <laughs> you, well, you did. Seven, seventy pound to seven pound is quite a bit of a battery. It is. But you did actually catch some fish last weekend and. We've got the Drennan coming up on the new junction, and you ran a practice match there and, and didn't do badly, really. No, no it, was, it was very nice. Um, it's a stretch called at Kirk Bramath, or near Kirk Bramath, where we're fishing. And it's somewhere I've never actually fished before. I've fished a new junction before, but never that particular stretch. And we've been, had it recommended to us by a few people, haven't we? Yeah. So I didn't know what to expect going into it. But what struck me is we got to the canal, and there was just roach topping everywhere. And I'm like, this is going to be mega. This is going to be amazing. Were they? Yeah, you saw them when you got there. <coughs> well, I was going to say this. They were topping all the way up the lake, to tell truth be told. But as we got closer and closer to the start, it's really like they're only in your peg. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is going to be all right. And um, I've had a lovely batch. I've just caught basically on squats in about nine foot of water, uh, loose feeding. I've caught some shallow later on as well. I've tried for some bigger fish, but I haven't had any. I've ended up with thirteen pound five, um, which was enough to win, which was nice. Um, but again, I was. I was quite, quite lucky really because we had a £13.3 on the MPEG, so I only just pipped in. But, but there's what, some people struggled, didn't they? Yeah, the top end was really hard. Uh, where you were, Matt, it was yeah, yeah. tough, wasn't it? I mean, but but there was still some fish to be caught. It was, it's always similar, that junkie. Like, there's areas with a lot of roaches, yeah. which is good because that section might. They're, shell, they're a shellfish, they yeah. can live with a shell, yeah. But then there's other bits that are a little bit tricky, but in them harder bits, they were like an odd big fish to catch. I caught a couple of big perch. Um, Alex Hume caught two bream for £7 and the day before on Saturday I went for a walk along and Joe Carras were fishing and Joe and one peg were catching a roach every chuck in, catching on hemp and everything and then just a few pegs away Dale Shepherd were fishing, couldn't get a bite but then all of a sudden he's caught a £4 bream so it should be a really exciting round. Yeah, well, there's big chub, there's big bream, I mean, you, had some, I mean, you didn't have a lot of bites but you had like three pound of perch didn't you? Which yeah. Was, you know, nice so yeah. when is the Drenham round on there? First of July, like that. So we've got another practice match on June the nineteenth. If anybody wants to book in, um, there's plenty of time for those fish to spread out a little bit as well. I mean, the good thing is they're in the area. Yeah, definitely. I think it'll be a belting match. I really do. Excellent. Okay. Um, looking ahead to next week's show, um, we've got the Daiwa Pole Fishing Masters coming up. So uh, there's still one or two tickets left for that. That's next week, um, and we're going to be filming this show from there. Next we are live from Summer Barn Farm next Monday. I'm yeah. going to be allowed out of the office. That'd be nice. Awesome. <laughs> um, we're also be looking at the Garbolino Club Angler of the Year at Tunnel Barn again. Last chance to get tickets for for that. Um, we'll be talking about the Decor Lakes round of the Maver Match. This uh, Fishermania qualifier from Woodland Thirsk. Um, but obviously, with with them allowing me out of the office to go out into the, into the great white world, um, we'll be down there at um, Tunnel Barn. Uh, at the Pole Fishing Masters and we'll leave you with some images from last year's event. It's a good spectator event as well. See you next week.